Hi there. My name is Juji. Welcome to my channel. This is a space for anyone and everyone who's interested in exploring self-development and relationships through the human design system. Well, I got my very first request to do a video on Kim and Kanye, and I'm very excited. If you have a request of your own, please put it in the comments after you watch this. The reason this is exciting is because I actually did an analysis of Kim and Kanye on my Instagram a few months back when their divorce really became uh, apparent because for a while there was touch and go. And I got a lot of really amazing feedback on that video, which actually is what spawned this whole series. So I'm really excited to be revisiting this again. And I'm going to do it from a little bit of a different angle, talking about Chris. Jenner herself. I dressed for the occasion, you know, giving you real Chris masterclass realness with her like, you know, sexy school marm look. If you know, you know. Um, we are going to start by looking at Kim and Kanye's charts, and then we will move on to what else I discovered behind the scenes that can be very interesting. All right, so this is Kim Kardashian. She's a 3-5 single definition generator with sacral authority. And she's on the right angle cross of laws, which I think is hilarious because she just got her law degree. And what stuck out to me when I saw her chart for the first time years ago at this point is this 3-5 profile. So as a three, we've seen her make a lot of mistakes quite publicly. She was on a reality show for the majority of her life now, and yet we still project onto her that she somehow has something figured out that we don't. I mean, sometimes the projection field is really positive, and sometimes it's actually quite negative. Some people think the Kardashians are ruining culture as we know it. Whatever camp you're in, that's a projection field. The other thing that really struck me is that Kim has a lot of openness in her chart for a generator. So she has only three centers defined, the ones that are colored in, and the ones that are open or white are where she takes in information from the outside world. And in this case, she's filtering a lot. So she's here to really be wise in the ways of where her decisions are coming from. Now we're looking at Kanye, who is a 1-3 single definition splenic projector on the right angle cross of rulership, which I think is hilarious because she's on the cross of laws. He's on the cross of rulership. These two things seem like they might be at odds with each other because it's her law and his rulership. And that might not work out in their favor in this case. And I want to point out too, that Kanye is also very, very open in his chart. He only has two centers defined and this one very prominent channel, the 44, 26, this channel of the transmitter. So we'll get a little bit deeper into this in a minute. Now let's look at the two of them together. Look at how much definition is formed between these two who are very open in their charts. I mean, they have five electromagnetic connections, which is quite a few, as we've discussed in the past. They do remain triple split together, so that's pretty unusual for how much definition we see here. But this is 9 and 0, oh, nowhere to go which a lot of the time we see as initially really attractive. If everything you need is already there in the relationship, it feels really good. It's like a kitten in a pillowcase. At first it feels cozy and then it becomes suffocating. So this could have been the case with the two of them. It might have been really attractive and warm at first, and then it might have felt a little bit overwhelming for Kim, or Kanye, or both of them. Lastly, we're going to look at Kris Kardashian. She's a 5-2 split definition splenic projector. I want to point out real quick that she too has this channel of the transmitter just like Kanye does, but we'll get back to that in a moment. 
Okay, so I want to dig a little bit deeper into this projector generator relationship because this is now the fourth relationship I'm analyzing where a splenic projector male ends up with a generator or MG female. So it started with Bradley and Gaga, Travis and Courtney, MGK and Megan, and now Kanye and Kim. So I want to give you a little bit more context about why this happens so frequently. And actually, I've had firsthand experience with this. So when I say that generators love the focus of a projector, it's really important to understand what that means. Projectors are best served one-on-one, -on -one, and so they love being in partnership with a generator who brings them this energy. And when a projector is focused on our energy, it feels really, really good. It feels very penetrating because they have a penetrating aura. They feel, it feels like that person really sees you and that can be very attractive. Now, Kim and Kanye had four children together, four. That takes a lot of attention and energy away from the relationship. So I'm sure that it was probably the kids that ended up dissolving that relationship, not because having kids is a bad thing, but it happens all the time. Fathers don't even want to admit to themselves that they are jealous of the attention that their children are taking away from them. So again, it just takes awareness to understand what's going on. And if you are a couple who's a projector with a generator and you have children, it's important to carve out alone time for the two of you so that the projector has the opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one time to focus on your aura and your aura alone. And this doesn't mean you have to be having sex at that time, right? It's all about this quality time spent together. So this could be something to point to when it comes to their relationship. I mean, obviously, I know that Kanye has a, some problems that have been publicly shared. I've always felt like whenever I saw one of his rants being publicized, it really gave me this sense of him just feeling unseen and unrecognized. And projectors are here to be recognized. His mother was somebody who really recognized him. That's something that he speaks very openly about, about how she basically felt like he hung the moon. And then he went out into the world. He was given a lot of feedback about how he's this kind of genius and this kind of savant. And oh my goodness, he's so amazing at what he does. And it was great getting that feedback from the world for such a long time. But that has a shelf life, you know, and if you're in the public eye for a long enough period of time, you know, you're going to falter. He is a one three profile. He has made mistakes. He hasn't always put out amazing music. Some people think that it's flawless every single time. Other people don't necessarily agree, but it's almost like his psyche can't handle any sort of negative feedback coming to him. And it causes a lot of inner turmoil, which was probably very difficult for Kim to deal with. They do have five electromagnetics, like I mentioned. Let's start with the channel of preservation, the 2750 from the sacral to the spleen. Even though they have splenic definition, it's important to recognize that this channel is very specifically about caring. So together they are about caring for their children, caring for the offspring that they brought into this world. It was their greatest accomplishment in a lot of ways to make four beautiful kids. And they talk a lot about how they're trying to keep their kids' lives as normal as possible under the circumstances. And of course, under the circumstances of being Kim and Kanye's kids, right? Like that's just not normal and it's never going to be. Then they have the channel 3536 from the throat to the solar plexus. So this is an emotional connection they share, which is centered around the desire for new experiences. And this is a very sexy channel. 
So I'm sure that they were very adventurous in their escapades. And, um, you know, she didn't give birth to most of their kids. So we can't really, <laughs> we can't really point to that. But the thing about this channel between the two of them is that neither one of them has emotional definition, but together they have this emotional expression. I mean, he's written a lot of music about her and that makes a lot of sense to me. They also have the channel of logic, the 63-4. This is more of an intellectual connection. They probably have a lot of stuff to talk about. They also have the 5342, which I've seen in a lot of charts I've analyzed recently. And I keep saying that it's not a very sexy connection, but who knows? I guess I'm being proven wrong since it shows up over and over again. Human design is all about pattern recognition. And finally, they have the 3313, the channel of the prodigal. This is very much about leadership. So they're their expression has um, a leadership quality to it when they are together. And naturally, neither one of them has throat definition. So I'm sure that this was a big part of feeling powerful together when it comes to their connection. So this gives us an idea of what brought these two together. But I want to talk about one more thing. I want to talk about Kris Kardashian. And this is why I feel it's so important to take a look at the big holistic picture of your life. And this is something that I teach in my relationship mentorship, that it's not just about looking at your partner's chart. It's about looking at the charts of those in your life and seeing the pattern emerge. So a lot of people credit Kim's success to Chris and her management skills, her salesmanship. She just literally did a masterclass on how to sell your own image. And the joke is, is that Kim Kardashian is famous for nothing. But behind everything that Kim has accomplished has been Chris. In fact, Chris, as the splenic projector with only one motor, the ego motor, gave birth to a bunch of children through whom she built an empire. She was able to see the energy and really see the big picture of where this family could go. And what she has built is actually unprecedented. Nobody has ever catapulted their children, just filled them with so much confidence and created such a business around basically nothing. I had a bunch of hot daughters. Here you go. You know, I mean, we've seen that with Yolanda and her two daughters and whatever, but not to this scale. I mean, Chris is the OG. And I feel like it all comes from this channel 4426. The channel of the trickster is what we like to call this. This is about being able to sell anything to anyone. I heard somebody tell me who has this channel, they could sell the panties off a nun. They can sell anything. A lot of real estate agents have this channel, so watch out. But Chris, instead of actually having to sell a product, she made her children into products. I'll give you a really good example of how Chris was this amazing momager and such a good trickster. When Kim Kardashian was first coming onto the scene and being photographed by the paparazzi and then by proxy, her other daughters were doing the same. Chris started paying paparazzi not to take pictures of them. They were already going to be taking pictures of them. She paid the paparazzi to edit the photos. So basically we've never seen unedited photos of these women. That's what most stars get in trouble for, right? The paparazzi takes a really unflattering photo of them from a bad angle. And then all of a sudden they're like, cellulite is on the cover of Us Weekly. We've never seen that with the Kardashians because Chris has all of the paparazzi in her pocket and she created this image from nothing. So so Kim was very used to being directed and having her energy directed and guided through her mother. And then along comes Kanye. 
And all of a sudden she's experiencing this very familiar energy, even though they're opposites, it was something she was used to. It was something that she already knew inherently. So one of the things that Kim is now talking about is she doesn't even know who she is without Kanye because he started telling her how to dress, where to go, what to eat, how to pray. Every single area of her life was controlled by this man. And we see that as like wrong and bad and oh, like anti-feminist or whatever we want to call it. But it's what Kim was so used to through her mom. You know, it's like well documented that we marry our parents, just ask Freud, you know, so it's really interesting to me to peel back this additional layer and see why these two, aside from the five electromagnetics, aside from the nine and oh, why these two got together and why it lasted for such a long time. And why now in her 40s, Kim is like, actually, I think I want to be my own person. Is that good? I'm cool. I don't need anybody telling me what to do or where to go or how to dress anymore. I want to discover these things for myself. I'm ready. And Chris is like, yeah, go for it. You're already famous. You're already making me billions. Like, do what you want. You know, sh she's like much more hands off. Not not so mama jury anymore. Um, but it makes sense now that Kim is, you know, uh, in the second half of her life that she wants more freedom and she wants to be more autonomous. And I completely understand that it's her law, <laughs> right? She's on the cross of laws. It's her law. All right, guys, I know that was a lot to cover. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Please also comment below. Like I said, if you have any comments or questions, you can also find me on Instagram at HD by Z and on my website, the link will be in the show notes. There you'll see I offer individual human design readings, a relationship mentorship program and a community for conscious women called the beehive. Would you like to receive a reading with me about your relationship? Or would you like to see how human design can help you personally? feel free to book a Zoom call appointment with me on my site. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Ciao for now.